Hey there, fellow air gaugers. Well, I have two weeks to put a functioning air brake system on the 58. Uh, that is when Chris Eden Green is going to be here and we have to be able to go up and down the hill safely. So now is the time to get it done. So uh, I'll show you where we're at right now with the project. Of course, the, uh, the brake valve has been installed. I have some piping in place here going down to a feed valve and that'll take the uh, pressure from 120 down to 90. Um, we have this pipe here, which is what remains from the, uh, the steam brakes. So I've got to cut this back there and route it in and then come up into here. Uh, there is also a uh, brake pressure gauge there. I have to put a T in that line to go up there to the pressure gauge. Coming out of the other side of the um, of the feed valve there, you see that pipe going through the front wall of the cab, and that's coming out and wrapping around, and then that's going to go under the platform, uh, and I had to take this step off and drill a couple holes in it so the pipe can pass through that, and then it's going to come around back. And then it'll come up here. There'll be, an, I think, an elbow and another elbow. And then the hose will drape down and will go over to the tender. And then a pipe will go down and then go underneath and follow that all the way back to a point where I have a hole in the floor. And at that point, the pipe will come up through the hole in the floor and come up to a big air reservoir, which is that thing sitting right there. And then that'll be sitting here. And if you uh, are familiar with the Denver and Rio Grande uh, three-foot gauge locomotives, uh, a lot of those tenders have that big air tank in the back. Yeah, it's going to look a lot like that. And then it'll all be fed by this Honda-driven air compressor that uh, is what we have to use. That's all we have available right now until we can find ourselves a appropriate sized steam driven compressor to put on the locomotive. Uh, that's all I really need to do to get things ready to go for, um, for that visit. When we start uh, putting the brakes on the tender in a passenger car, well, there'll be an, another line that'll come off of the um, uh, off the brake line up front and it'll also follow the same path uh, to, the, to the rear here and come up through the other hole. Of course there'll be a couple T's underneath that'll go to the brake cylinders on the trucks on this car. Uh, that brake pipe will come up into here then go over to the back wall and then it'll exit through the back wall and then there will be a hose that'll go to the passenger car and to the brakes on that. This will be a uh, uh, straight air system. So if you apply the brakes, it allows air to go fill up the lines to apply the brakes. Um, not going to do the traditional, you know, Westinghouse type brake system. There just is not enough room for that equipment uh, on this locomotive or in the tender. So uh, we're going to go with straight air, and I think we'll have, uh, we won't have any trouble because when it comes down to it, if we had an issue with the brakes, 58 can bring the train to a stop using the Johnson bar. Uh, so um, want to avoid doing that. It's not the best way to run it, but it does have enough tractive effort, <laughs> enough weight uh, that it can control the entire train if it had to. Uh, so, uh, so that's basically what we have going on here. So I have two weeks or actually a week and a half. Uh, so we need a little bit of time for uh, testing. I'm hoping next weekend to have this installed enough that we can fire up and do some testing and see how this all works out. And uh, hopefully we get it done in time. All right, talk to you later, bye.